Welcome to another VEX Quickie. I'm Dave and this time we talk about polar coordinates. But before implementing this in Houdini, let me bring up my chalkboard. Let's look at this with only two axes, the X and the Y axis. Finding the position of one point is not that difficult. For example, one in X and one in Y. From here, it's also not that difficult to create a simple shape like a rectangle. The second point is also fairly easy to get. You simply negate one of the axes, or in other words, subtract the length you want the rectangle to have from that axis. You get the remaining two points in the same way. Create the points, the primitives, and connect them with the vertices. Fairly simple. But this gets a bit more tricky if you want to create a circle. So let's draw one on the board. The first thing we need is a radius. It defines how big the circle is. If this was our first point, we now have to figure out how we get more points in all the other directions, but still have the same radius. The first problem for that, when do we know that we covered the full range of the circle? Luckily, math has provided us with a number to figure that out, and that number is pi. So to cover the full circle, you need to use two times pi. But you also need to put into consideration how many steps you take. Or in other words, how many points you put on the circle. So let's say this is one step. This would mean you add up all the steps and then you divide 2 times pi by the amount of steps you take. But this still does not give us the x and y position. So let's say we want to get this specific location. To calculate them, you need to use the cos and sine function. And of course, these functions need an input, a parameter that defines at which location on the circle we are. When you created your first point, the main factor for the second point is defined by the angle, the angle that rotates this line from the center along the radius. So let's call it A for angle. You provide the angle to the functions and the result you need to multiply with the radius. Combine all of that and you can create a circle. So now let's take the theory and bring it over to Houdini. Create a new geometry node, delete the file and create a detail wrangle that we call the ring. First let's define how many points we are going to use. Then we create a float variable that covers the range of our circle. So that's pi times 2 divided by a float channel that we call steps. As you can see, you can bring in the value of pi by using the expression $pi. And we need a few more variables, a vector, the angle and the radius. Let's start the angle with 0 and the radius with 2. Now we can also create the channel for the steps and for now keep it the same as the amount of points. You will see why in a few. Let's bring in our first point by using the function add point and provide the vector we created before. We never filled that vector, so the point is at the world center. Let's give it something to work with. I want to create this circle on the ground plane, so instead of x and y, I use the x and z components. And we are using exactly what we have seen on the board. For the x-axis, we use the cos function, provide the angle and multiply it with the radius. With an angle of 0, our point made a jump on the x-axis over the value of our radius, because the cos function with 0 returns 1 and sine returns 0. If we manipulate the value of the angle, the point is created somewhere else on the circle. If we bring the value up to pi 3.14, you can see that we reached half of the circle. Make it 2 times pi, we make the full range. Let's also create a channel for the amount of points. At the moment we have not yet done anything with it, so let's change that. I create a for loop that iterates as often as I want to have points. Inside of the loop, I want to increase my angle by the step I defined earlier. Step basically holds the size of the pieces in which I divide my circle. So given the current inputs, I need 50 steps to make the full circle and I create one point at each step, but only up to 8. If I bring the amount of points back up to 50, we have the full circle. If I change the angle, the position of the first step is shifted. With this alone, you can do quite a lot of things. For example, create sci-fi HUD elements or other interesting motion graphics. But let's create a second version of this and give it a bit more complexity. I call this wrangle the spiral. Bring the points back to the amount of steps and initialize the angle. Then instead of starting with a radius of 2, let's also zero this one out. But inside of the loop, we want to give radius something similar to the curve U attribute. 
So take the value of the current iteration and divide through the amount of points. By setting float in front, you're basically casting these values into float variables. But let's find out what we get. Now look at that. Doesn't that look familiar? Now from here on, we can do quite a lot of things. But the most interesting stuff happens if you decrease the amount of steps it takes to complete a full circle. By playing with these values, you can create really interesting behaviors. But you can get a much better image if we connect the points with polylines. So let's put that in very quickly. I loop over all points, create a new polyline primitive with each iteration and create a vertex for the current point and the next one. Now you can see much better how the points behave and why this is called a spiral. If you change the step to a full integer, you get the matching geometry shape, like 4 steps for a rectangle or 3 steps for a triangle. But now let's find an interesting shape for the next layer of complexity. At the moment we stayed in the two-dimensional space. So let's enter the third dimension. Create a wrangle and put it in between the two nodes. Keep this one to points. And again, we create a variable similar to the curfew attribute by taking the current point number and divide it by the amount of points. Then take that variable and multiply it by another value that you can control by an external channel. You could do quite a lot of funny stuff with this value. But as I said, I wanted a third dimension, so I feed it directly into the Y position. And at this point, it's only a matter of your own imagination what you can do with this setup. And for my patrons, I added this idea as new functionality into the tool asset. You will find it under point data, vex and then polar coordinates. The tool provides you with all the parameters you need to create a wide variety of shapes. You have the starting radius, the amount of points that go into the system, the starting angle that lets you rotate the shape as a whole, the radius offset to shift each point's position on the radius, and of course the steps it takes to cover the range of the circle. Again, this is the parameter that allows you to create really interesting shapes. And to make those shapes visible, you also have an option to connect the points. This should give you quite a lot of options in the 2D space, but of course I also added the third axis. By increasing this parameter, each point gets elevated by a tiny fraction. And there's quite a lot you can do with this. For example, create custom forces for your simulations. And obviously you can animate each and every parameter. Again, may be useful for interesting motion graphics. And I was about to wrap this up when I got another idea. I recently played around with the crowd system, making the agents run along a spiral defying gravity. That spiral I created very quick and dirty. This gave me the idea to use this tool to create that path. And here's how I did it. First, let's reduce the amount of points to something low and zoom in a bit. If the steps needed to make the full circle are at around 4, you will notice that the spiral has four main sides. And if you look a little bit closer, you will notice that you would be able to create a polygon with four points that follow a reoccurring pattern. In this case, we could connect the points 0, 4, 5 and 1 to create one segment. Use that pattern to loop over all of the points and you should be able to create a path. To give you control over that, I provided four offset values. If we enter the numbers I just mentioned, 0, 4, 5 and 1, it will use that to create the loop I mentioned. Activate create polygons and we get a path. I made it a bit easy for myself by creating a new point at each location, which means we get some duplicate points. So just throw in a fuse after that and get rid of those. But let's see how this looks with a big spiral. Crank up the point amount and toggle create polygons. And there you have it. And of course you can still use the previous parameters to change, twist and manipulate this shape. And as always, I hope you found that useful and are back next time.
getting tired I look up, think of my ancestors 